come out of every dark corner of this place to point and laugh at me and then oh oh i am so out of shape i have no idea how far we ran anyway i stopped to catch my breath only when those rumbling noises from behind are completely out of earshot. Are you alright? I wipe away the sweat covering my entire face and turn around to check on that girl I pull to run with me. Stop that. Yes. <laughs> she looks confused while staring in the direction we came from. She's probably wondering whether that monster will pursue us. I don't know. I don't know what that thing was. Do you know what it was? Obviously not, since you're asking me. Sorry, I'm very scared right now. Yellow dragon and all. Eh, that was the monster I've been talking about. I have no idea what it is either. Uh, well, about that. <laughs> Technically. No, I have, I've never seen that before. I don't know what that is. A human creation. Are you joking? Humans can't create such a massive thing. Okay, well, you know, we can, my guy. Raylan? Rylan? Roland? I forgot his name already. <laughs> she lowers her head to think about something. Then I realize I'm still holding her hand. S sorry, your stamina is really amazing. Raylan. I hurriedly release her hand, but I notice she didn't sweat at all, and her breathing is unbelievably steady. She should be panting heavily after running like this. Thought there was a person riding it inside no there couldn't be a monster like that he must have been digesting him but she just ignores me and begins to mutter to herself as if she's trying to recall something guess not every aristocrat girl is weak and prone to illnesses my worries are unfounded well i'm going back what about you i point in the direction that i remember as my way back i mean what are you going to do? Are you just going to go back to that little hidey hole? Sleep a little more? She glances in my direction, then looks behind her as if she can't make up her mind. Although we have escaped from that monster, it may come here, and we don't know if there are others in this mountain forest. So it's best for you to return to town with me for now. now I'm not certain if this girl is from our small town, but I still bring it up after a moment's hesitation. After all, it's probably too dangerous to leave her alone in this mountain. There be, there be dragons about. Oh, stop! <laughs> Hurry up and go, Missy. I pat her shoulder to encourage her to pick up the pace. I, I'm just, I'm just telling. I, I didn't do anything. I swear. Is this guy? She angrily brushes away my hand and walks off on her own. It should be along this direction. I hurriedly point in the direction behind me. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> someone doesn't know where they're going. She frowns and, and returns to me grudgingly. Sorry, sorry, it's a habit of mine. I would usually talk like this at the kitchen where I work. Okay, so, we're learning some things. First up, I'm a chef. I work in a kitchen. Secondly, actually, that's pretty much it. <laughs> There's a yellow dragon in this forest. We must hurry. Yes, yes. She is urging me to hurry up and go before dismissing mine. After dismissing mine. Actually, I only have a rough idea of the direction because this expanse of forest is far larger than I thought. A nighttime thunderstorm could change so many things? I'm relying on my memory to find my way back, and the girl is following me quietly from behind. However, the surroundings are getting more unfamiliar. Do you remember what happened last night? I slow down a little to allow her to catch up. Scent? I'm sorry, what are you, a wolf? 
she intently casts her deep purple eye straight at me, as if she's checking on something. Eh? Scent? I'm a bit confused. What? What did I do last night? What have I done? I've done many things. Hopefully none, nothing bad. I'm, I'm sure. I'm innocent. Why you, why you smelling me, lady? Huh? Stop that. She just looks away and bites her lip while muttering to herself without answering my question. Uh, I will be honest, actually. Actually, I still remember the earlier part clearly. A few Yarlians were after me. I ran for my life. Then those Yarlians suddenly stopped shouting for some strange reason. At that time, it was pitch dark, and I didn't dare to look back. Afterwards, I stumbled across an opening on a tree. When the place got lit by lightning, I fell inside by accident, and... I knocked the back of my head, trying my best to remember the earlier events. I saw you were inside that opening, and then... Hey, yo, I, I didn't do anything, I swear. It wasn't me. The girl suddenly stops in her tracks and calls out an alarm, snapping me out of my thoughts. She looks completely surprised, much more than that time when she saw the huge yellow dragon. I also quickly turn to look in that direction. What do I see? <gasps> this! My god! 50% off! Oh, it's a steal! <laughs> what has happened to the town? What is this vast expanse of pillars? I'm trying my best here. <laughs> We've walked to the edge of the forest without realizing it, but the sight in front of us looks alien to me. Where are we? I look at her, from her serious expression, I can tell she's equally puzzled. If my memory didn't fail me, this place should be a small, run-down town. Doesn't look so run-down to me. A small town where one could see the edge in one glance. I can feel my breath getting more rapid. Everything is so confusing. But in front... How did this large city, which resembles a labyrinth, appear in one night? So we do, okay, so we do know it's a city. Or we're, we're technically assuming it's a city. What, what should we do? Oh, for me and the war? I'm sorry. You come here, see a city and go, I shall be president. Vote for me! End the war! What war? The one I start! <laughs> the girl looks away from me to stare in the distance and begins to say something strange. What? November 1972. Was that, was that the year that we went down? Huh? The year 1972? What are you saying? Look there. She points to a tall building opposite. It resembles a tower stretching to the heavens that I can never imagine. A large poster is hanging at the middle of the tall building. The poster has a picture of a man with a pipe and a burning flag behind him. That is, the flag of Yarly? No. At first glance, it looks like the Yarlian's flag, but in fact, it appears closer to the flag of Yarli and Norli combined together. Nevertheless, I'm more interested in the words on top, on top. 1972 General Elections. The year 1972? Rubbish, stuff, and nonsense. I can't help slapping my face, hoping to wake up from this ludicrous dream. Ugh, ugh. It can't be. Not the 70s. What even happened in the 70s? I don't know. I don't remember. Stuff? Probably not good stuff. Wake up. Quick, Raylan. Wake up. Quick. Not the 70s. My cheeks feel as if they are burning after being slapped repeatedly. 
and the palm of my hands are even starting to feel numb, but everything remains the same. How did it become like this? What is going on? I lower my hands limply, unable to stop myself from trembling all over. June 1672. 1972. So what? We were asleep for 300. I'm sorry. What, was I down there in 1672? Was I there? Has it been 300 years? 26 June 1672. I'm filled with new hope when she mentioned the year, which I know well. Okay. So we came from 1672. It is now, however, 1972. So it's been 300 years. Was that a magic tree? I don't think we have magic. By the way, I mean, okay, obviously vampire, just whatever. They're going to live for a while. Um, me, I'm just a guy. I'm just a cook. I don't, I, I don't live longer than probably 60 years. Probably less. 1672, I probably wouldn't even made it to my 30s. By the way, you also remembered it was 26 June 1672 yesterday. You were 10 years? I'm sorry, were you just going to take a 10 year nap? Oh, that sounds lovely. That sounds nice, you know? Just fall asleep, wake up 10 years, like, ugh! Hey, what's going on? Ten years? What do you mean, ten years? I quickly grab her and press on with my questions as if she were my lifeline. What do you know? Quickly, tell me what is going on. Think quicker. Think harder. Think faster. She lowers her head. What do you mean, me? I did nothing. I'm a chef. I'm a cook. I think the girl suddenly glares at me after some time. Me? I point at myself to confirm I didn't hear her wrongly. What did I do? Huh? I'm sorry if I was running for my life earlier. What plans? Plans? Changed? What are you talking about? Your abode? Okay, listen, lady. I'm gonna say this right now. We left 1672, traveled 300 years to 1972. I don't think your abode is still around. She shakes me off and turns around to leave. Wait! I quickly grab her. I don't... I don't know your plans, nor do I want to. And I don't care if you want to go anywhere either. I just want to go back. So help me return. So help me to return first. What does that have to do with you? I don't know. Maybe the fact that you said something about plans? Ears? I think this has something to do with you, lady. It's obvious. I'm sure I ended up here because of you. You definitely know how to return too, right? I can't return to 300 years ago. I can't just walk back and be like, oh boy, here I go year after year. When I said return, I mean I want to go back to the year 1672, not 1972. I'm assuming magic. I don't know. I don't want to argue with you. Let me go back, and I will pretend I never saw you. You stop calling me stupid. Explained it. Clearly, you have told me nothing. What do you mean? You can't do it. What do you mean? I 
Wow, you are quick to give up, aren't you? I can't return. No, wait, if I can't return, I'll never be able to find Mr. Cook. Oh no, oh no, this is... This is heartbreaking. This this is heartbreaking, man. This this hurts worse than anything. Mr. Cook, no. I'm sorry. I didn't want to leave you. I didn't. I had no choice. I was forced. I swear. I can't return. I freeze as if a bucket of ice is being poured onto me. Then, what about Mr. Cook and Miss Aaron next door? I don't even know who that is. I care more about Mr. Cook. That's not an answer. That's not an answer, lady. She cackles as if she's gloating at me. I bow my head. If this is the year 1972, they should be long gone by now. Figure it out myself. I am trying, lady. Her voice gradually becomes more distant and eventually fades into the wind. She's gone. What should I do? Should I go after her? But I have no idea where she went. Where should I go? Where can I go if Mr. Cook is gone? I wander aimlessly through the streets in this foreign city. Ooh. Um, acid kicks art? Wow, this acid art thing is like everywhere. That, that doesn't seem good. <laughs> the roads in this place are painted black in color and have wide pavements. Vehicles with metallic bodies and four wheels zip past me, one after another, and they move so quickly without harnessing the power from a horse or ox. In addition, there are skyscrapers that stretch taller than massive trees reaching up to the sky. These buildings have a variety of attractive posters and sign boards displayed at their entrances, and the pictures are so beautiful, it is hard to tell them apart from the real thing. I begin to develop strong hallucinations by looking at the various things around me. I seem to be a non... I seem to be a non-existential spirit drifting about this city. However, Every passerby is looking at me strangely. Their bewilderment proves I'm not a ghost. Stop staring at me, you weirdos. I even thought of searching for the places I could remember at first, but I couldn't find any familiar building or signboard. From morning till night, I passed countless streets and many unfamiliar faces, yet I didn't get anything. Mr. Cook. Where are you if I if you're still alive? Where are your traces if you aren't around anymore? Eventually, ooh, we're at a carnival. Let's go. That's some fun. <gasps> Is that popcorn I see? Oh, get get yourself some popcorn, man. Oh, ooh, god, that's a giant ass Ferris wheel. Eventually, I reach an entrance with open metallic doors. The passageway beyond the entrance has smooth has smooth music and bright lights that feel like a place full of joy and laughter. Give me a second. But something on the other side catches my attention, and I stride there. Mr. Cook? I realize that at that moment, this is the place. A large statue of a person holding a shotgun is standing in front of me. And that person is Mr. Cook. The statue has a plaque at the base with the words written on it. Menlo Cook. 7 8 16 31 21 3 16 75 Mr. Cook's restaurant used to be site sited cited at the same place as the statue although this lo although this locale looks entirely different now my gut instinct is telling me that I used to live here Menlo Cook Norley civilian hero he was the first person to spot a Yarlian scouting party and raise the alarm, enabling the Norlians to organize their defenses in time. I read each word on the plaque verbatim. Although very few words are written on it, each word feels more somber than anything else. Cook later joined the Norlian militia 
and died a glorious death in the most heated battle on March 1675. Both colonies merged after this long period of war and bloodshed in history. I open my mouth when I finish reading everything on the plaque, yet I can't breathe. As I take a step back, the heel on my foot trips against a loose tile sticking out, and I fall on my buttocks. Then a few people in outlandish clothing of various colors laugh boisterously at my wretched state before they promptly disappear amid the bright lights in the distance. Okay, wow. I... You're telling me I fall down, people just come out of every dark corner of this place to point and laugh at me and then just go away? What kind of place is this? I look at the lights and can make out the words, Amusement Park on top. Amusement Park. I feel hurt. Mr. Cook, his restaurant, and my home were buried in this Amusement Park's grounds. I stagger to my feet. I have to escape from this cemetery in an amusement park. I can't breathe. I wander along the streets in bewilderment. Now I really have no idea where to go. In this world, who am I? Toot toot toot. Oh. Well, you guys hear that? Well, that's some beats. A set of loud noises suddenly ring out from behind me. I turn round to see a red-colored metallic vehicle, and the people inside are looking angrily at me from behind the car's window. Country Bumpkin! <clears throat> Country Bumpkin, move aside quickly! Where are you going? Can I hitch a ride? Country Bumpkin, are you mad? Now a few men have stepped out of the vehicle while cursing and swearing. So, these metallic boxes can contain that many people. Hello there. I have nowhere to go. May I come along with all of you? That group of people surrounded me after I told them about my predicament, and their angry expressions are replaced by sinister smiles. Eh? What are you doing? A man suddenly pins me from behind and it seems both of my hands are being restrained before I can react. Of course, first time in the big city and I'm getting mugged. <laughs> Nothing, we just want to befriend you. Don't get, don't get so agitated now, lads. <coughs> okay, <coughs> whatever I did there was not good. <laughs> lads, put it on them. A gunny's sack, which smells horrible, is placed over my head, and my vision turns black. I'm getting kidnapped? This fella is out of his mind. He looks so wretched. Who knows he might... Who knows if he might be an escapee from the mental hospital? Would those... Would those punks at the Tiger game want him? We can tear him about before selling him. They won't be able to tell. What is there to sell? I have nothing valuable on me. It's okay if you have no money. Your entire body is worth a lot. One kidney alone can fetch a hundred thousand. <laughs> All of you are bastards. Release me. Help! I'm being tied up from head to toe. No matter how hard I struggle, I can't move. I can only yell through my mouth. Well, I mean... Isn't that the only place you can yell from? Damn, you're so noisy. Something hard is hitting the back of my head a few times, and I'm getting dizzy. Cool. I just got kidnapped. Oh. Shadow? Lady? Okay. You said hey three times, and yet you said completely different things both of those three times. <laughs> I don't want to sound rude or anything, but like... Where's the consistency? Someone is kicking my stomach. Who's calling me? I blearily open my eyes and see a silhouette in front. You are... Her. I slowly regain my vision. Did you kick my stomach? Hold on. Hold on, I ain't getting past that. Did you just kick my stomach to see if I'm awake? 
That's so rude. That's so mean. I slowly regain my vision. Then I realize that the dark figure under the moonlight is none other than that girl inside the tree. My name's Raylan. She's just looking at me from above and appears somewhat annoyed. Hold on one second. Somewhat annoyed. You're annoyed. I'm the one that should be annoyed. John, what happened? Where am I? I have returned? I can only see a forest around me. All those roads and tall buildings are gone. As if I have returned to the world I belong to. Still thinking about... I am awake! I think. I didn't go back. <laughs> it takes so long. <laughs> so I haven't returned. Stop looking down. I can feel a slight ache on my on the back of my head as I regain consciousness. And then I suddenly remember that I got bound by several men before passing out, and my head took quite a beating. No. What? What happened to that group of people? I scramble to a sitting position and look around upon recalling this part. Dealt with? What do you mean, dealt with? What did you do? De dealt with? Mad? Of course I was mad. They were about to take my kidneys. Probably everything else. Mad. I mean, you know, theories, experiments. Hmm? Only one way to find out. No, I only wanted to ask them for help. What do you mean? Carry on like carry on like what? I think I'm doing a pretty fine job right now. The girl seems to be laughing for a while, but she sighs afterwards. Okay, I I I ain't no fool, lady. But I had no other choice. My home and my family are long gone. Here you go with the scent thing again. Will you stop smelling me? Weird. Your scent? Okay, hold, hold, hold on, lady. First up, I ain't made no contractually binding deals, agreements, or anything like that. No, no paper was signed, no hands were shaken. The hand was clasped, but that doesn't count. And I ain't no thrall, because I don't know what that word means. What are you saying this time? Deal? Thrall? I don't get what you mean at all. Dear God, now I'm rhyming. This day just gets worse and worse. She pauses for a moment before smiling at me. Ooh, got a name. Yila Lester. And a vampire. Well, we kind of already knew that. Yila. That's what you focus on? I slowly recite her name. This is a vampire's name? Ha ha ha! This girl is actually a vampress. I'm laughing at you. She seems somewhat angry. Maybe she's surprised at my response. Now I'm laughing at the sheer incrudely, incrudely, incredulity. I'm laughing at the stupidity of things. 
vampires, thralls, sleeping for 300 years? Do you have anything more far-fetched than these? Not really. I mean, sure, you have a whole bunch of bat stuff. That doesn't make you a vampire. Normal people probably won't believe a vampire's words. At this point, what's the difference whether I believe you or not? You know what? That is kind of true. I mean... Also, would people believe a vampire's words? I mean, would people believe anyone's words? I mean, sure, vampire, yada yada yada. Normal people won't believe a vampire's words. Nah. What's the difference whether I believe you or not? What's the difference whether I believe you or not? I have no place I can call my home in this world. Even if I believe her, it won't change anything. Yeah, kinda. A little. Hey, yo, 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 stop that. What? What are you going to do? You're gonna kill me? Yila comes closer and taps me with her sharp index finger. Oh, that's right. She did bite me, didn't she? I mean, I get, I, I figured she did. Great. Is this, is this gonna be like a permanent thing? Is it gonna heal? She stabs my neck lightly with her fingernail. What nail? It doesn't look like she's got any nails. Mark. She jabs intently. My skin is about to break. Ow! It hurts! Don't tell me this girl is really a vampress. Her hand is surprisingly large and doesn't match her appearance. That's probably just perspective. I get... Again. No, no agreement was made. No hands were shaken. No contract was signed. No packs were bound. What deal? I didn't agree to it. She has a slight point there. I don't like it that she does. <laughs> you must have forced it on me while I had passed out inside the tree. Hey, yo, 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 it was, I, didn't, I didn't do anything. I, I was not planning anything nefarious. I don't know what you're talking about. God knows I was doing good charitable things. I, I swear it. He knows. I, I just entered to take shelter from the rain, and you erased my memories. And I can't remember anything inside the tree at all, let alone any recollection of whatever pact. <laughs> Who knows? You know. You're the one that forced this on me, lady. Vila. <coughs> you. So, is that why I was able to travel 300 years? I am a thrall, which I'm guessing is servant. I am a thrall, which means... Do I also live forever now? Yila withdraws her finger. Wait a minute, I also have another question now. Earlier, you're a, you say you're a vampire. You were out in the sun during the day. You were out... In the day, in the sunlight. Care to explain that, Missy? Yeah. Yila withdraws her finger, and that cold feeling promptly leaves my neck. <laughs> well, you know what? Credit recorders do. Thank you for that, I guess. I ain't no thrall, lady. She's saying it while licking her own fingertips. How did you get rid of them? <laughs> Protect, but you're a vampire. Don't tell me you won't suck my blood. I wonder if I'm imagining things. Probably. 
I am getting my organs cut out right now, aren't, aren't I? This is just a hallucination. It feels as if she's trying to overcome something. Minion! Do I look small and yellow to you? What do you mean you're not interested in my blood? My blood not good enough for you? Hmm? Something wrong with it? I feel insulted. No, I would feel insulted. If a vampire if a vampire comes up to you, has a little bit of your blood, and goes like I thought I turned you off. Has a little bit of my blood and goes like, you know what? No, I don't like your blood. I I think I would feel a little offended. Like, what? what do you mean? It's blood! You're a vampire, you take any blood you can get. Yeah, not yours though. I would I would feel so hurt that a vampire would not take my blood. I, I, I don't know. I have no knowledge of this world after 300 years and basically can't help you with anything. You aren't interested in my blood either. In that case, you have absolutely nothing to lose if you annul this pact and allow me to leave, right? Well then, alright, see you later. She's releasing me that easily. It seems a vampire's attitude to his or her servants is more than... is much more liberal than a landowner's. You're telling me that if we get a certain distance apart, I'm just gonna die? Shrivel up? Like that, like that freaking kid from Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> I'm just gonna shrivel up and die? Oh no. Well then, I'm sure being a thrall ain't so bad, right? I'm sure there's plenty of benefits. In immortality, it seems. That's a pretty good one. Do I get dental? She closes her eyes and her lips curve upwards as if she's deriving pleasure from toying with a pet. You. A vampire isn't up to anything good after all. Protecting me? We have been in a tree trunk asleep for 300 years. You did shit to protect me. Fine, fine. How should I repay you then? Okay, just going right into it. Do we? I assume you have plenty of time. I don't know what the life expectancy of a thrall is, though. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Perhaps you already took me into account a long time ago? <sighs> the wind from the mountainside is blowing her silver hair up, and she's smiling at me with her sharp fangs glinting under the moonlight. As her hair spreads out in all directions under the moonlight, she simply looks like a pure white angel. No, a vampire should be a monster. I can't allow myself to be deceived by this girl's appearance. <laughs> Stay a thrall to a vampire or die instantly. I guess I ain't got no choice, do I? That monster whispers to me. Didn't sound like a whisper. My name is Raylan, not John. I was wondering earlier where did this John come from? I'm Raylan. Raylan Monroe. Yela shrugs and smiles happily. <laughs> Raylan. 
Great. It's going to be like this, isn't it? You must be doing it on purpose. She's looking at me slyly and is smiling even more gleefully. Oh boy. Gila points to something beside me. Eh? Where did you get these sets of clothes? Were my clothes really that bad looking? I mean, you know what? Probably. I was running away in a thunderstorm and fell down a bunch of times. I'm probably filthy. 300 years as well? Oh my god. How is the stuff not disintegrated? You. You really got rid of them. I look at the pile of clothes, and they really appear very similar to the ones those people were wearing earlier when they surrounded me. A very weird person. She goes out after saying it. She's probably giving me some privacy to change my clothes. Fine. I choose a set of clothes that is close to my size from among the pile. The clothes in this era are much softer than the ones during my lifetime. During my time. After all, I have no choice but to follow you. Ela's shoulders stiffen slightly in the distance, as if she heard my muttering. Hey, get, get, get out of here! Get away! I am changing. Then she turns around to chuckle. Eh? I haven't finished changing! I am indecent! I hurriedly pull my pants up. You're the one that stared at me! Gila quickly looks away while blushing. And she strides off in a huff. But her steps become more light-hearted after she's walked a few paces. She doesn't seem to be angry. Rather, she's behaving as if she is jumping for joy after finding a treasure or something. Oh ho oh, oh, ho! Oh. I am working I am thinking, lady. Coming! I quickly run after her. Since there's no going back, and I have nowhere to go, I might as well follow her. Two heads are always better than one. Oh. What a lovely home you have here. 